Seven, can you tell us, um, can homeschool children further their education at tertiary? Yes, they can. Um, so of my homeschool children, the oldest five are finished with school and they've all gone on to do either college or varsity. Uh, my oldest son's doing a master's, my second son's doing law and so on down the way. So yes, um, short answer, yes, homeschoolers can go on to do vars to varsity or college and the longer answer is um don't assume your children want to go to varsity they might want to do something different and so varsity is not the only way to become a responsible grown-up adult person there are many ways and varsity isn't necessarily the only way okay that's a good answer good uh answer for our first question hi guys today i have seven and we're going to jump straight into our icebreaker questions and then we continue with our conversation. Today we're talking about taking homeschool children uh, to further their studies at universities or technicons, anything beyond metric really. So she will be sharing her story today. But first, before we continue, let's start with these icebreaker questions. So when I was combining this, right, um, I had the one way it was, you had to choose between swim or run but i'm like hmm, seeing your page i know you're gonna choose swim i'm like no <laughs> I'm not <Yeah>. <laughs> it's an obvious one and then there was another one between books and television and i was like hmm i think she'll choose books i'm like mm -mm, i don't i'm not gonna choose that <laughs> so i'll ask you three questions right and then you just choose one okay awesome. um yeah. coffee or tea yes <laughs> <laughs> um, I usually have tea at home, but I like to go out for coffee with friends. Oh, okay. So, both of both worlds. <laughs> yes, okay. exactly. The best of both. Okay. Um, what else can I ask you? Stay up late or wake up early? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I should go early. <laughs> I like staying up late, but I also like getting up early. Um, okay. And I usually have to swim early, so I have to get up early. So you swim okay. early in the morning. Very early, yes. When it's still cold. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any I chance of make sure that I understand you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, early okay. is good. Okay. Uh, sleep or gym. Oh, Jim. Jim. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. We are done with our icebreaker question. So, um, just some few house rules. Today, you will be sharing your journey with us, with me, uh, subscribers, and my followers. But whatever that you'll be sharing here, you're sharing it based on your experience, from what exactly. you have experienced in your life, what you have seen. You are not here as an expert. You're not any advice to anyone we are just talking right and if people have uh further questions they can write them in the comment section below and i'm sure seven won't mind answering them do you mind, <laughs> I <won't> mind. <laughs> yeah so make sure that you answer all your questions and uh in the description box i'll leave uh our guest um contact details like how you connect with her and so okay. forth so if you want to connect if you want to follow her wants to ask your questions or whatever i'll leave all those details in the comment section lastly please if you are writing or expressing your opinions just be mindful of the other person who will be receiving those opinions yes we are all welcome and yes we are all independent thinkers and we all have our own opinions but let's just have that filter when we are writing in the comment section i think we are ready to go deeper okay so this topic is it's a very interesting one. Uh, but Seven, before we continue, can you just tell us about your motherhood uh, and your homeschool journey? Okay. Um, I've always homeschooled. Um, we started homeschooling our kids right from the very start. I think um, my firstborn child, uh, he was an avid reader very young. And he was reading like Charles Dickens and mm. all these like great authors. And he was six. And I thought, I can't send him to regular school. Um, they're going to bully him. 
I don't think you will handle the cat in the hat very well at this stage. So, <laughs> yeah. so then I started looking for alternatives and homeschooling was, turned out the best way I could educate all my children. Because, you know, your children are also different, but it was the best way I could provide the best education for each of them. So, mm -hmm. like, the one was a really good reader and the other ones not necessarily. Some are good at maths, some are good at art. Yeah, homeschooling allows you that diversity to teach them according to what they need to learn. Mm. So that's why we mm. chose homeschooling. And um, a lot of people said to us when we get to got to high school, oh, now you're going to send them to real school? Yeah. And we were like, <laughs> um, well, this is our real school. And <laughs> I've got to be honest, I'm so glad I homeschooled them through high school it's been great for you know homes when you're homeschool high schoolers you've got to remember that they're teenagers yes, <laughs> it's yes, not an yes, easy yes. time you're not dealing with rational people so when you are homeschooling little ones at least they go yes. to sleep at night and you're like okay it is chaos but you get through well high schoolers don't go to sleep at night you have to adjust your <laughs> your clock and there's a lot of adjustments <laughs> but i think it's been good for our relationships and that just the time mm. spent together um mm. my grown-up kids i still love spending time with them it was never like oh please will they leave home now um mm. <laughs> it's yeah it's been a great relationship builder and um i think from homeschooling our kids have shared memories it's not um Mm, this mm. one was in this class and had a memory and they, they've they've shared their memories they've heard the same stories it's their personal culture and mm. i think your personal culture is very important uh mm. when you go up and go out in the world it's it defines them they will be friends when they are grown up they will call each other they do mm. they, so yeah so we've always homeschooled i'm nearly finished i've got a three left in high school so and then that's it yeah oh, wow. uh yes. how many how many children do you have seven you have seven eight, eight of them so oh, we okay. had seven. <laughs> and then we had one more and so i've got eight kids yeah. okay okay understand yeah. and just for perspective uh, how old is your your eldest okay so the oldest is now about to be 27 and the youngest wow. is 14. Okay. So, so yeah, it's a so twelve years span. About. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've done this a few times now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So wow, that's that's so beautiful. And just hearing you saying you started, so you never sent your kids to school. So the first yeah. one straight yeah. to homeschool all the way. Yeah. So you've been homeschooling for so many a long years. time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> decades already so I, i'm very excited to learn from you and as you share your experience with us and like i said uh today we're focusing on sending homeschool children to tertiary but can i just ask one question when you when you started homeschooling or even when you were starting high school and people were asking you questions and like you're saying when they were asking you when are you sending them to their real school and I'm assuming also that it was not well known back then when you started. How did you overcome all of that? Just briefly, how did you overcome the fears, the questions, the second guessing um, your decision and so forth? You're always going to have doubts. So when you start homeschooling, even your little ones, you have doubts. And there will be, you know, there'll be those people that say, oh, your children will never learn to read or... Um, but they do. It's almost mm. miraculous that your children learn, and you have to build on the confidence of of that. Um, mm. Yeah. So, I mean, when it comes to high school, there are a lot of reasons why people think they must go to school because they're going to learn more technical stuff, or they're going to learn more stuff you can't teach them, and so on. Mm. But um, if you think about it, if your kids are passionate about something, you know. I could not teach my child to be an astrophysicist. Never. Okay? Yeah. Not going to happen. But if your child's passionate about that, by the time they're 10, 
they already know more than you'll ever teach them anyway because that's their <laughs> passion. So if your child is passionate about dinosaurs, yes. they're going to outstrip you in knowledge long before they get to high school and you're going to have to come to terms with the fact that if this is what they want to learn about, they are going to find the information they need. They're going to learn. So mm. high school, you're really guiding them. It's a journey. And your job is less of sitting at the table next to them. It's more like making resources available to them. Maybe showing them online courses they can do about mm. the stuff. Maybe... Just going alongside them. So it's almost a yeah, part of like nice Now it's you're more like, more like guiding them. them. It's like you're nice. mentoring them. You know? I like that. When you're answering the first question, when I asked you if homeschoolers can go to varsity, you said yes, there was a short answer, and then there was also a long answer. Now, can you just walk us through uh, how do homeschoolers prepare to tertiary level? Like when I say that, I mean like when should they start? What do they do? What preparations do they need to <laughs> to make or to, I don't know, like how do we okay. prepare for it? So you need to first find out what your child loves doing, okay? okay? Because if your child loves photography and wants to go to film school, it's going to have different requirements to say the child that wants to do computer science okay. at a university. So you have to know what your child wants to do. And mm. then... So you have a high school plan. Basically, your child's going to do a bit of maths, a bit of English, a bit of everything. And we mm -hmm. continue with that all the way through school. But mm -hmm. then they start to almost channel towards their passions. Mm -hmm. And you go with them for that journey. So if your child really wants to go to university, well, then look what are the university requirements for that child. So, or mm -hmm. if they want to go to college, what does the college require of them? Mm -hmm. So you still give them the education, but now in the last few steps, you also channel towards what the requirements are. So mm -hmm. for instance, if your child wants to go to university, most universities, if you phone the application office, will say, oh, no, we do not accept um, homeschool students, which is rubbish. They do. But it doesn't fit on the form. You actually have to speak yeah. to a person. <laughs> yes. So then yeah. there are ways around it. It's just, it's not as smooth as if your child got six A's from a trick and sent their thing in, their form in, and got all the boxes ticked. It's a little bit harder, but it's not impossible. Mm. So most universities here require you to do some sort of matric. So you don't have to do a CAPS matric, and my okay. kids haven't, but okay. you can do GEDs or SATs, which are the American version. That's what I've done with my children. Some people change to Cambridge okay. um, in high school, but that, wasn't a, that wouldn't work for us. That sort of one-on-one -on -one intensity wouldn't work with a family with so many kids all doing their own thing. So, yeah, we just carried on with the school we were doing. And I made sure that we covered as much as we could. So, you know, basic language, vocabulary, yeah. maths, yeah. all the basics. And then when they got to like grade 11, let them write their GEDs and then matric, just write the SATs. We didn't specifically study for them. It's just in that year, I got them practice exam papers. You go online, you sign them up, they write the exams, they're done. Boom. And you can send those results to the metric board and get a metric certificate. And that's how they got into college. So we looked at the college they wanted to go to and we said, what are the requirements? And they said a metric whatever. So we looked at the metric board. Yes, you can do SATs and translate that to a metric. It's all good. So you can do it. But okay. you need to do a bit of work to get there. But surely yeah. if you're going to varsity, you should do a bit of work. You should do your research. You should I mean, that's a natural homeschooler way of thinking. Yeah. <laughs> how would I homeschool high school? You'd research it. Well, how is my kid going to go to university? You're going to research it. So just research it. And there are ways. And your child might not want to go to varsity. Your child might be really passionate about making films. 
Send them to film school. What are the requirements? Do they need an art portfolio? Well, then make sure they get that done. If they want to go to drama school, make yes. sure they've done literature or languages. Make sure they go online and do some online courses and get the skills. Job shadow. So yeah. many kids say, oh, I want to be an engineer, but they don't actually know what an engineer does. It just sounds good. So then yeah. what sort of engineer do you want to be? So find an engineer and go out for coffee. You know, my, my one boy uh, wanted to do law. And so he went for coffee with a lawyer. And the guy said to him, come, you can come to court with me and you can watch what happens. He loved it. That went straight, mm -hmm. okay, this is really what I want to do. Exactly so, what I want. Yeah. Exactly. So you've got to find ways. You know, your child, if they want to be like a, I'm just giving you examples, but if your child, for instance, wants to do be a sports scientist, well, send yeah. them to sports science to job shadow. You can do that and let yeah. them find out, oh, this is what it's about, this I love, or actually I hate it. And my, my one child said, I love talking to people. I could talk to people all day. I'm going to be a psychologist. And we got the textbook and this book and that book, and they started working. And then they realized, oh, hang on. You have to listen to people talking all day. That's not the same thing. No, no, that's not You're for not them. Talking. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening. Okay, so you've got to um, let them try things. That's what high school's about. It's a journey. Let them try things. Let them meet people. They should meet a different career person all the time. Every yeah. opportunity. Wow, have you met this person? They do this. They might not even know that's uh, something they can do. You know. So uh, yeah. Oh, you know, I like I like how you how you're phrasing it. It's not a general thing. So I can't say if I've done my exercise with my firstborn that it's gonna be the same with all of them. So I have to look at each and every child and see what they they're interested in. I like that. I like that. So it's. It's tailor-made for one person, you know, and I, I like that. I actually, that's yeah. the whole point of homeschooling. <laughs> I, I so it I, is, you know, especially in high school that I have. Um, I'm probably answering your questions ahead. <laughs> but in high school, um, when you're homeschool, the school takes a short time. Mm. Um, it doesn't take eight hours a day. Mm. Two, three hours and they're done. But that means there's still a lot of hours in the day for them yeah. to go and do the stuff they love doing and get better at that and explore that. And mm -hmm. I think that gives them an advantage over children in school that are spend a lot of time doing busy work mm -hmm. and they don't have as much experience maybe to discover what careers are there or discover what they like doing. You know, if you've got a child that loves fixing cars, and he's sitting in school, he's not going to fix a lot of cars. But if your homeschool kid knows, oh, the guy down the block is fixing a car at 10 this morning, they will finish their school and be gone. You know, yeah. so there's, so there's yeah. that opportunity for them to do more and find yeah. out the things they love. Wow. That is, that is beautiful. And I like that because most people finish school, we're not even sure what you want to do. Then you go to no school. Idea. <laughs> few years in there you're like i don't like this thing <laughs> then you change again okay, so i like what you're saying that as early as teenagers you know as early as high school they must um assess what they like and do their research to see yeah. if you want to do this this is where you need to study and what are the requirements and then they're working towards a goal so not like just working you know just doing everything a little bit of everything and just hoping for the best <laughs> that one day i'll be something so i really like that but now you mentioned that um they have to write a test uh you said they have to log in online and so forth but who who marked this test can you just start like even before we get to metric generally who marks the test of homeschool kids okay who marks the test of your kids now <laughs> <laughs> Why are you putting me on the spot? I do. <laughs> no, it's on time. Okay, so if they don't understand it, they can't go on. So, okay, so for like maths, I teach my kids their maths. If they don't understand, they can't go forward. Um, their English, a lot of the English we do is I read with them, um, vocabulary. If they don't understand, they can't go on to the next thing. So it's kind of obvious whether they're working or not working. 
And I think also in high school, giving them the chance, okay, so for to get to do well for mom, really, it, it's not a big deal in high school. I'm just saying that it's it's not. That's not their priority. So sign them up to things. The outsource. So my kids do the science courses at the aquarium. They love them. Okay. Um, so somebody else marks their work. Go and look for, if there's a local college that will let someone without matric do a course, sign them up. Say, oh, really, you are interested in this? Let me sign you up. And you would be amazed how your high school kids can gear up and achieve for a college course or just look for courses, look for people doing stuff. You'll never, you never know. There might be like, I know UCT has summer school. So they're not tested, but it's like you can go and attend a course on, I don't know, medieval church spires or something. I mean, it's weird, but I mean, <laughs> but you know what I mean? If you've yeah. got a child that wants to know all about frogs, let them find a course on frogs and go and learn about them. And they mm -hmm. will raise their game. There are lots of online courses you can do. They're free. Mm -hmm. You do not have to pay. Uh, lots you have to pay. Don't fall for that. You can do the free ones. I know one year we did for science. Um, oh, what's it called? Um, we did a forensic science course. With, um, Interesting. Oh, nice. It was so much fun. That's how we did science. It was, a, I think, a Udemy course or future but one of those online big online schools mm. and it was free as long as you kept up with the class and that was yeah. fine so the first day they show you a picture and there's a car and somebody died here let's find the clues and then the next week you walk around and they say well this is that how is you do it and it's amazing and it's yeah. fun and it's engaging and so research and find things that are fun. It doesn't all have to be boring slog, you know. You can have fun. And that's the point, you know. Make sure you're having fun. Yeah. Mm, nice, nice. And now for for the metric equivalent uh, certificates that you get, that you do online. So it is marked, you do it online, and this is marked, and then you just get the results. Does it work again? Um, for the GEDs, you have to go in, you go on their website and you look for Google GED. You go on the website, you can book and go and write it. Um, Khan Academy has lots of practice for writing these final exams for GEDs and SATs. It's free. Go practice exams and go and write them. Google SATs. I think GEDs you can write anytime you like. You phone their office or you go online and you book your test whenever you like. And for anybody, that's for anybody who wants a piece of paper that says matric, a GED is quite adequate. If you want to go and get a job anywhere and they say you need a matric, then you can hand them a GED and it's you're good to go. Um, wow. SATs are more for college entrance. Okay. And... I think in South Africa, you can write them twice a year. You just go on the SAT website and they say um, in South Africa on this day, book your okay. exam. So it's really easy. You don't have to do a complicated thing. Um, obviously, if you're going to change to something like Cambridge, then you have to get their books and do their exams when they say and all that. But that, I mean, that's a route you choose. Obviously, you're going to research it. And if that's what works for your family, then fine. You know, oh, wow. so there are different ways to do this. Yeah, nice. And I'm just well. wondering now, as you are talking, um, once you get that certificate, when you come to the board, the South African board, do you now have to pay that fee, that huge fee that I hear people talk about to get the metric certificate? We have not paid a huge fee. <laughs> no. Those are you've never heard of that. No. No, that's cool. no, 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 that's good because I've had people say you owe them. <laughs> it's still coming, the bill is coming. No, it's not. No, it's no, I've never heard, heard of this. Yep. Okay. okay, that's that's good. That's good then. It's good to know that you can um convert those certificates into metric if you want to use it locally. You can, you can, and then um. So most varsities, if you've got that, 
they can still refuse you if they want to. But then if you've got a year of college, which is tertiary, then they can't. So on the grounds of academics, they can say, oh, well, you know, we would rather you had better than SATs or whatever. But then if you've got a year of college, then you're sorted because then you've done tertiary education already and then that's it. Okay, so sometimes the university might say, okay, your results aren't good enough or whatever, but it's just your GDs or your SATs. And then if you've got a year of college, then that's tertiary. Okay. And then that's good. So you can find a community college and send your child for a year. So what I'm saying is a year of college, even one year at a college, counts as tertiary education. Obviously, it is tertiary education. And so from there, you can easily get into university. Mm. So if your SAT's marks aren't good enough to get into varsity, you can spend a year at college building your matric, so to speak, and and there you go. You've proved you can do tertiary education now and you're good for varsity. Wow. Uh, this was a detailed response and I think you have covered the requirements really um, of what is required in order for the child to go to varsity in a sense that you've said that you have to do whatever that they need they want to study and then they must work towards that goal um can i just ask a general question under that if maybe someone wants let's say wants to be an engineer right and yeah. the university requirements are normally english uh science and math most of the time and i don't know if they've added some of the things but those are the main requirements so uh, how how do you then uh, uh, go about doing that or when you are doing that certificate how do you choose your subjects then because i'm well, sure they don't have like things like life skills and, and so forth so how do you oh, how how is it quantified at university you will have things they call credits that maybe this module is a 16 credit this one's eight credits this one's 32 credits so right. for subjects uh, how, how how is that quantified if i don't have life orientation or <laughs> life skills or whatever they call it these days <laughs> so um you will obviously teach them science mm. because they're going to do engineering they will do some sort of science they will do obviously maths and you will prepare them as best you can and they're not teaching you're not teaching them just like in a vacuum so obviously they're learning everything they need hmm. for varsity and then when they write the SATs the results will prove that they can do maths they will get a high mark or they or they won't <laughs> but but they should get yeah. the marks required do you know what I mean yeah so are they guided when they're then, choosing their and subject? then you also write for them so this is an important thing we haven't spoken about, but you write for them as they go through high school, a, um, it's called a transcript. And it's okay. like a, it's like a CV of their okay. high school. And it's actually quite fun to put together and you work on it with them as they go up. So for instance, um, obviously I'm gonna put English, not Afrikaans. <laughs> My kids have not done Afrikaans, but they have Is done it? French, so I'll put French, okay. um, maths, and so on. And I can give them a grade on how they're doing. Mm. Um, so, you know, at the end of the chapter of the book they're working in, I can say, do the test. If they get 60%, I can put to C. If they get 100%, I can put to A++++. plus plus plus. Mm. But on that transcript, you also put everything else they've done. So if they've done an online course, if they've attended a college course, what sport they do, um, some like my kids do sport at the local high school, um, what volunteering, find them volunteering, let them do it, let them go and volunteer places, put that down, it's very good and it shows leadership. And varsities mm. aren't only looking for marks, they're looking for all rounders because that's yeah. going to represent the university well. So the mm. more rounded your child is, the more uh, 
outside of the academic skills they have, you know, better. So, um, you know, like my one child loves talking. So, yeah. you know, put him on a debate team. Put what debates he went to. Um, mm -hmm. uh, another one loves uh, hockey, plays first team. Put that down. Another one has loved working at the aquarium. Put that down. It all counts as a mm -hmm. picture of who they are. Because if you look at just their marks, so the SAT, they get a score. It's like 1,300 points, the end. Tells you <laughs> nothing about that person, the not person. one thing. So you, You're right. create, you, you create a CV for them of what they do in high school. And you wow. submit it. You send that in with the result because it's mm. showing them that your child's committed to a particular thing, that your child is a leader, that your child is passionate about certain things that they're studying towards. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It just makes yeah, sense. Yeah. And you yeah. build that up. You don't try and do it when they're in trying to apply. It's too late because it's something you should have worked on all along, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And if they got a, a job at the local store, well, put that down because it shows that that kid is invested in things, you know, yeah. its future, yeah. its work, its commitment, and that's all good. So, mm. yeah. Okay. There? Does that help? Interesting. It does. <laughs> it does. You're giving, you're shedding a lot of so light. Even if your child doesn't go to university, if they're applying for a job, that helps. Yes. If your child decides they want to go and, you know, uh, teach at, teach English on the far side of the world, like many children do, by having that uh, transcript, that CV all prepared as they finish school, it's demonstrating all these skills already. It's there. It's ready. They can just take that with them and apply for the job. It's not just for university. It's for the all roundness of your yeah. child. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Wow, I, I like that. I like that. And I think that can help a child as well. I'm just thinking, um, teenagers, maybe there'll be a point in their life where they feel confused about life, um, confused about who they are, what they like, you know, and having something tangible that says you did this this year. And I think maybe when they look at that, they they might remember how they felt when they were doing that. Like, oh, I actually enjoyed doing this, you know? And like when you as a parent can say, oh no, but you're good at this, you're good at this. Remember you did this course and so forth. So when you have that portfolio with you, they can just see and they can refresh their feelings and emotions and what they felt when they were doing that. And they can easily decide if they want to continue that part or maybe they want to change you know so i exactly. really like that exactly. in fact uh i'm going to take this advice you just gave now to do with my kids <laughs> right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> so just like what have you done this year <laughs> let's see what did yeah, you learn what did you enjoy you know when they're little you collect their art projects but when you're big you have to collect other things other mm. actions they take mm. you know mm. so mm -hmm. yeah very informative a very informative discussion today i'm with seven and we are discussing um all things relating to kids going to universities uh technical colleges or whatever life after metric i have another question now um after you've said all of this i know you've touched on it when you were answering some of the questions but in your view what are the benefits of um homeschooling children like when it comes to preparing children for life what are the benefits of homeschooling? Everything. Yeah. <laughs> I think they have every advantage because they have had time to think about where they want to go and what they want to do. Even mm. if they still don't know, they've had all that time to think. Um, they've had time. They have more free, t free time. Mm. So... All my children have got jobs and worked during high school. That gives them a huge advantage over their friends who haven't mm. worked because mm. they already know um, 
the value of money and the value of hard earned money. Yes, um, yes, yes. So um, that's a huge life lesson right there that they spent because they were homeschooled. Um, yeah. So they learned that responsibility. And I mean, they're still normal t teenagers. They still don't want to get out of bed. They want to sleep all day. They still. <laughs> I mean, their priorities are not your priorities. Don't make that mistake. When your child <laughs> is a teenager, don't for one second think that they are thinking about what their metric results are going to be. They are thinking about food and friends. <laughs> and what, is that? what is their age? That would be age appropriate for them to be thinking that. Yes. Um, it's our. It's at our um, responsibility to to guide them through the food and friends. They yes, <laughs> yes, they are growing. Yes, mm -hmm. they do need friends to help them break away from their parents, um, mm -hmm. to help them develop into human beings. Mm -hmm. We can't dictate to them. They need their friends' opinions. They need their friends' vibes. And it's a good thing. They must spend time with friends. And that's another huge advantage of homeschooling is they have that time to spend with friends and hang out and just do nothing yeah. and stare into space. Your teenagers are going to want to do that. And, you know, you can't wait until your child is 18 and then say, okay, go see the world. You've got yeah. to let them incrementally do it. It's like saying to your 18-year-old who's never crossed a road, go get your driver's license. You've got to yeah. let them... Do little bit, little bit, little bit on the way. And they're going to make mistakes. Believe mm. me, they're going to mess up. <laughs> and that's fine. I would rather my teenager messed up and we can fix it than, you know, my middle-aged child comes to me and says, oh, you know, I've done this and that and the other. Let them make their mistakes now. Mm. And they'll see that, you know, what is a huge drama when you are 16 is really not the biggest drama for your whole life you aren't destroying your whole life you know if you miss a sports practice and you can't play a match on saturday or something it's a life lesson but not the end of the world yeah. so make those mistakes in high school it's a good time to make mistakes you're fine you're going to be fine make yeah. mistakes. your parents are here we will catch you yeah don't expect perfection hey they they're kids with a teenage brain which is mm. not a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, wow, that's that's great advice uh, for the parent as well <laughs> to, yeah. to get ready for that phase. So, yeah, a lot of things are happening in their lives. And like you're saying, allowing them to be out there, allowing them to see the world while still under your wing, I think is the best thing. Yeah, that's just home them home. And Yes, they're still coming back to you, so you still have yeah. that opportunity to guide their heart and um, their steps with you. Um, but now let's 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 talk about varsity because you have kids who have gone through this finished school and they went to university. How, what are the advantages or the benefits of homeschooling them? Like when you, if you were to convey or if they convey their lives to their friends that they meet um, at the university, like what's the difference? What are the advantages of homeschooling them when they are at the university? I sound like I'm selling homeschooling. The <laughs> 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 um, big advantage is your homeschool children have learned how to work on their own. Mm. So, I mean, I don't sit at the table next to them all day long while they're doing their work. I say, there's your work, show me when it's done, show me on Friday, show me this, show me that. I also have a life and it's important for my kids to see that their schoolwork is their responsibility, my job is my responsibility. Mm. And, you know, when they're little, you need to sit beside them, but as they get bigger, they don't need that anymore. I think that's invaluable when you get to varsity. There's no lecturer at varsity ever who checks your homework. Either you pass or you fail. And that's a big advantage to have learned that lesson in high school. Either your work is done and you move forward or it's not, you stay exactly where you are. Mm. So that for me is an advantage. Yeah. It's, it's learning the responsibility. Mm. So they're responsible. 
for their own work so they're not doing it just to, for mommy to see that i've done it exactly. but they need to be responsible for the work that they've understood what they're doing and they did what you're supposed to do mm. Ah, oh, nice, interesting. <laughs> okay, you know, for someone, if maybe um someone watched this video and heard us the first time when I was asking you, can homeschool kids go to university? Most mm -hmm. people will say, well, that will happen when pigs fly, you know, because <laughs> like, you know, it's not possible. But now you just you just explained it to us <laughs> that it okay. is very possible. <laughs> it's it is very possible. possible. Yeah. And, I think, and the thing people think is, why would you keep your child at home all those years and then send them oh, into the big bad world of university? How are they going to cope? But you know, you don't homeschool in a bubble. My kids are not locked in the cupboard. They're yeah. out there. They've got friends. They've got this group for that thing, this hiking group, this soccer group, this. They're not sitting at home in a bubble. And when they get to, when they get to varsity, they find their community in their group of friends, in their class, in their thing. Yeah. It's not, they're not just flung to the wolves, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you let them get out. You don't make them sit at the kitchen table for 12 years and then say, bye then, you know. <laughs> yes. And, yes. Uh, this yes. whole socialization question of homeschooling is just the biggest fallacy. Your children are not isolated. Mm. Unless you isolate them, and then that's a bit weird. So don't do that. Let them out. <laughs> <laughs> Let them free. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No. Wow. No, that's yeah. I like that. And I know you said you, you sound like you're you're selling homeschooling. Um, I'm gonna put you on a spot now. What are the disadvantages? Like when you look now at your children um, as adults, young adults, and and when you think of them when they were still little, what are the disadvantages of homeschooling them? You wish I didn't do that. What is that one thing for you? I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no regrets. <laughs> okay, so we are on the right, no. we are on the right path today. <laughs> oh. No, no ah, regrets. <laughs> So that I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this conversation, and uh, I just want you now to speak to someone like me with uh, relatively young children, or someone who's still getting started, and not just as a homeschooler, as a mom. You know, as a mom, we make decisions and we second guess, we doubt, we feel with fear, we don't know whether we should change, and and so forth. So we as uh, moms also grow with our children. You know, I, I'm not the mom yeah. of the world nine years ago <laughs> when I first yes. had my twins. So we grow with our children. Um, for you now, uh, what are some of the things that you wish you did more with your children and when they were still young? I think with my first few homeschoolers, I was always really worried about what everyone else was doing. And, you know, the, I would look at their friends' school books and they were writing pages of essay for school and mine were still playing with sticks in the garden. <laughs> and um, honestly, yeah. um, stay with the sticks. They will mm -hmm. all learn to write an essay when they need to. Don't mm -hmm. compare yourself to anybody else. Don't compare. Don't. This is a big thing. Don't compare your homeschool child to a regular school child. They learn different things at different stages. So you mm. cannot compare two types of education. Mm. And I, if I were to do it over again, which is nice because I had so many kids I could, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would definitely not have worried with any book work or worksheets for as long as possible i would have left that off and not even bother just play 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 my younger children definitely got the benefit of that they played a lot a lot more mm. and i was always like you've got to finish this page of maths before we can blah 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 and it was why did i do that i would no don't do that just go and play Take days oh. or have fun with your kids because this is your chance to build those relationships that you want when they all finish school 
you want them to come home and still want to have fun with you. They don't want to come home and do a math worksheet with you. I promise they want to come home and have fun. Stop worrying about what everyone else is doing with their children and do what you want to do with yours. If you want to have pancakes for breakfast and read stories on the couch, then that's what you should do. Just do it. Make memories. That's it. Make memories. Stop worrying about what everyone else is doing. Stop worrying that the neighbor's child is... You know, going to be a springbok athlete and yours is barely, you know, putting shoes on. Don't worry about other people. Make memories with your kids. Yeah, happy memories. Do that. Because you know what? When they're big mm. and they come back home for supper or whatever, yeah, that's what they're going to remember. You don't want them to remember you sitting at the table with a math worksheet. Mm. They want to remember going for a walk at the park, playing, mm. doing stuff with you. Don't, wow. yeah, childhood, give them their childhood. Mm. But what about that worry? What must we do with this? Well, I'm, it in talking, I'm like, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will go out, but still I'll come back and I'm like, but we're not done with the madness. <laughs> how, what, how do we... How okay, that? So, okay, so you worry that you're going to have gaps or... Uh, not finished stuff or yes. okay so let me do a comparative study for you mm. supposing your child was at school i mean mainstream school yes. and they had a math textbook for the year and they got yes. to the end of the year and they had done 17 out of the 20 chapters mm. your child's not going to fail they're going to go up to the next grade right so why as homeschoolers do you think your child has to do every single example, every exercise, every worksheet of every book they ever get? If the mainstream schools can leave chapters out, why can you not leave a page or two out to go and play? Think about it. And if you're going out in nature and playing, that is better for your child generally mm -hmm. than anything you can give them sitting at a table anything mm -hmm. um put the paints on the table and let them paint whatever they like and work away, walk away or read a story or do something they're having fun you're relaxed that's very good for their whole being their whole mental health physical health all the health far better than filling in every exercise in a school textbook i mean it just doesn't make sense you know mm. well what if yeah. they've got play a board mm. game there they've done maths for the day they're done now boom that's wow. it that'll wow. be fun yeah. when they have to go to varsity and they realize they need to do this and this and this and this to get there and they mm. will really want to do that Trust me, they will do this, this, and this, and this, and get there. Mm. Because that's the motivation is theirs, not yours. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So. Oh, so man, I think you have helped us a lot. A lot of homeschoolers who are still wet behind our ears. People like me. <laughs> so you have helped us a lot uh, by just sharing your journey and sharing your wisdom and your advice. And I really thank you and appreciate the time you've taken to speak to me. And I can't, uh, yeah, I wish I could ask you more questions about other <laughs> things. <laughs> I wish I could ask you more questions about other things. But um, for the sake of time, um, I think we can wrap it up. How do people connect with you online? Or, or even physically, if you want people to come meet you. Um, my, so you can find me at on Instagram, seven mm. underscore hoods. And you can find me on my blog, www.seven.org.za. All right. Okay. Okay. Cool. I will leave those links in the description box. So if people want to connect with you, they can go.
go on your website yes. and read. There's a lot to read in there and there's a lot to learn also on your website and also on your Instagram page. So if people want to follow you, um, I'll leave those below. Thank you so much, Seven. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this and I really learned a lot. That's why I'm saying like you've helped people who are still words behind their ears. People like me. <laughs> because really it's like an older sister holding a hand of a little sister and just shining the light, you know, showing them the way so i really appreciate that and please next time if i ask you to please join me on another chat just say <laughs> yes don't think about it <laughs> yeah, you know when people say thing. i'll think about it or I'll, i'm gonna talk with my husband <laughs> just say that just say yes because okay. i would love yes. to have you again <laughs> uh, it's been lovely thank you I, I i really enjoyed your questions you made me stop and think about how i'm doing <laughs> things it's good you need yeah. even a little catch up. So no, lovely. Thank you. Thank I you so enjoyed and we learned a lot from you today. Thank you so much. Welcome. And thank you guys for watching. If you've watched until the end, just leave seven sevens. Yes, down below. Then you'll know that you've watched the video until the end. Thank you so much, seven. <laughs> Bye guys. Thank you.